Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this vlog. So here we are going to discuss about uh, Shweta, who is doing research in Netherlands. She moved to Netherlands last year around fall, and her field of work is in medical science. And so this video will be about her journey from India to Netherlands in her field of, and also will dive deep into her field of research and also her future plans and any tips or advice for all of you so let's start into start the video and go to the first question so what's your field of work shweta yeah so like you mentioned, I uh, broadly it's medical sciences, but my program is uh, basically a research program in molecular mechanism of diseases. So like there are different diseases and we study what is the molecular cause of these diseases. So this program just focuses, it's like more on the molecular biology level and uh, it's two years program really. And you can say that it's a master's level program. So it's a research program before your PhD. So it like prepares you for your PhD. And uh, it has like 12 to 14 months of uh, lab work. So you have like two internships kind of where you can do six months in Netherlands and six months uh, international internship. And rest of the six months which are left like 14 years of lab, uh, 14 months of lab work, sorry, and six months of uh, coursework. So uh, I'm currently doing, I was currently doing my first internship before the before this COVID-19 crisis. And I was working in the field of uh, tumor immunology. So basically we were working with immune cells. Uh, specifically, I was working with natural killer cells, which we were working on uh, improving their activity against tumor. So we have different types of cancers and I was working with ovarian cancer. So we were trying to engineer these cells to so that they can effectively kill the tumor cells. So this was my project. And one thing I forgot to mention, you are now in Radboud University in Nijmegen in Netherlands, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm doing this uh, for program at Radboud University. Yeah. So before we go to the next points, do check in the description. Shweta has a podcast and a YouTube channel where she shares some interview about, uh, I mean, in our podcast, she shares interview with some PhD candidates all over the world in the field of science or STEM, right? Yeah. Like, STEM, yeah. Yeah. So just check it in the description and I will also leave the contact details so you can contact her if you want to know more in details about the coursework. Okay. So moving on to the next point, how can other international students or maybe specifically Indians can apply from abroad? Yeah, so for this you program, you can just that, tell it in brief, like uh, because it's a very yeah. broad point what I mentioned. Like, yeah, I can just say that you can go on the website. Yeah, okay. In short, I'll just say, and if you need anything else to be added, let me know after I finish, then we can do that. Sure, okay. So uh, uh, this program, which is known as Molecular Mechanism of Diseases, if you just go Google it uh, as Molecular Mechanism of Diseases, Radboud University, then it just takes you to the main web page. And the application procedure is like pretty simple. You have apply tab there and the application starts somewhere around, I think, uh, as far as I remember, December or January. And uh, the procedure is very simple. You have to submit your supporting doc documents and fill in the details, like your educational details, your personal information. So it's it's pretty simple to apply for anyone, be it international students or Indians. You can just search it in, on the Radboud University website. Uh, do they need GRE? Like I think they need English test, like TOEFL or IELTS. Yeah. And the yeah. uh, transcripts and uh, like motivation letter, SOP, LOR, yeah. all these things I've also mentioned in admission requirements for master's video. You can check it out. But uh, do they need GRE? Because that varies from institute to institute. Right. Yeah, but no, uh, for this program, you don't need GRE. Uh, you need TOEFL, yes, or IELTS, whichever English proficiency test you have given. And like you mentioned, you have to write a motivation letter. 
and also you need two recommendation mm -hmm. letters from your previous uh, professors and about the scholarship like i previously mentioned there is a, a scholarship available for this program which is for a uh, non european students so the application for scholarship is uh, you don't have to apply separately for it the application procedure itself involves your application for scholarship and if you are eligible and if you qualify then it in, it is included in the same procedure but if you want to apply for any other scholarships which is not a part of this program then you have to do that separately but the one which radbard university offers you it is included in the application procedure okay yeah so how do you describe the workload of your program which you are doing currently already almost one year not one year but almost close to one year yes okay. So uh, I would say that the program is like very fast paced because you have so much to do in a very short period of time and uh, it has a very intensive course. So when we started, we had like three months of intensive course work, like we had courses back to back. And sometimes it was so intense that we had like classes for two weeks, then you were given like two days and then you had an exam. so like coming from uh, at least i can say for uh, indians or from coming from an indian educational background we are used to a more of semester pattern where we have like six months long semester and we learn through uh, time and then we get some time to prepare for exams so initially when i came it was really very overwhelming because everything was first of all new and things were going so fast paced like you are not used to this right and the course work is not really like study study every day we used to have presentations and the presentations used to be like at 12 we used to get some papers like some research papers and then at 3 or something in the afternoon you have to give a presentation on those papers so you have to be like really very quick you have to grasp things and i was not really used to this kind of uh, teaching before so it was really in the initial first month it was really difficult but then you eventually get used to it so it's very very hectic and very intensive in that way but yeah you will get used to it if you decide to do this course and eventually it gets fine but first first month was really very difficult okay yeah, yeah i mean uh, apart from that you also like uh, have to take care of your house and yeah. clean all the like cook and clean the the utensils and there are a lot of additional work when you are moving abroad and learning those things adapting so with time i think everyone adapts most of the people adapt yeah so yeah moving on to the next point did you have did you feel any impact because of the current situation caused by covid-19 like uh, for the last few months yeah, on your research like because i have heard from many people like who have to really go to labs to do research had some issues because of the obviously they cannot everything is closed mm -hmm. and some are restrictions so yeah yeah like uh, i told you that i was doing my first internship and i could only just do it for 9 weeks i had just started in january and i just did it for 9 weeks and eventually we had to stop all the lab work and we had to suspend all the experiments so whatever we were doing in that process we had to just stop discard whatever is not needed and nothing could be done ahead of that and yeah it, it did impact because at least for our research in our field we have to go to the lab you have to perform experiments so there is computational work or uh, analysis which can be done from home but you have to generate that data right you have to do wet lab experiments and then you can do that so there was nothing we could do at the, this moment we had to stop everything and now because there is no lab work it's kind of no internship right now so for now we have to write research proposals or i'm working on a research proposal for phd and writing thesis so kind of we have to now substitute our lab work with these things but it did impact because now we don't know when we'll start back because nothing is started universities have not started yet and even if the research facilities begin uh, students will be allowed up quite later first the priority work will be started and so we don't know if we'll be still allowed to go to the labs anymore at least for this academic year 
so it's very uncertain for now yeah 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 it's unfortunate but that's the truth uh so what are the opportunities in netherlands or maybe in europe like the schengen regions uh yeah. maybe in jobs or research or phd anything when you finish this kind of a program like what can someone search and apply or do so um, after finishing this program uh, you can go definitely go for phd because like i previously mentioned it is get gateway for your phd so by the time uh, i know most of the students in this particular program or any research program by the time we finish this we have uh, our phd opportunities in our hand so that's how it works like it prepares you so much that you have your phd opportunity even before you finish the uh, program but if not then uh, most of the students have their research proposals ready so they can separately apply for grants and in this program itself uh, we apply for grants like we are taught how to apply for grants we have like courses or sessions which train us for that so we have our research proposals ready so even if you don't have a like funded or defined uh, phd position for yourself you still have your proposal and i know that um, like 95% of the students who enroll for this program go for phd but i have my few classmates i know from past students that they also apply for jobs so most of them also get into industry so you can go for pharma or biotech companies and i know that most of them get opportunities here in netherlands itself and if not then like you mentioned you can also go to other european countries after finishing this program because um, this program really has a very nice reputation so if you go to the radboud university website you will see that it is the best uh, ranked program masters level or research reverse program here in netherlands as well as a uh, like kind of worldwide so it's it's a very uh, it has a very good reputation as a program and it has received many awards so like if you apply somewhere stating that you are a part of this program it really adds to your profile so you won't have that much problem in receiving job opportunities or phd opportunities okay yeah so what are your future plans after this yeah so uh, yeah i definitely want to do your research yes yeah, so i definitely want to do a phd and also a post doctoral research but let's see for now i'm focusing on phd uh, i'm sure i'll do my phd that's the plan for now and later on let's see like wherever life takes you but the next step is definitely phd okay that's great so yeah so i have mentioned this in the beginning also just check the description you will find all the details you can contact her if you are interested in this field and you are applying from anywhere in the world and moving on to the last point so any final advice or tips that you want to give for the incoming aspirants who want to study abroad uh yeah so i mean uh, this question now in this situation i don't know because many people are also asking like uh, will this kind of uh, i mean what is happening now will it have impact if they come now and graduate after 2 years uh, i mean so there are two two aspects to this question one is very simple which is related to to the field that they are applying and the other is considering the extra burden that has come because of the situation like so i mean just give your thoughts i i yeah. i also cannot answer the second part which is very difficult because yeah. we are not like in that position that we can say like what is going to happen after 2 years yeah. but i'm just like your thoughts yeah well for incoming students especially those who are looking forward to study in netherlands i would suggest that uh, like i previously mentioned you just do your homework look where you want to do and then start the application procedure but start the preparation as early as possible so that uh, you have enough time to do all the things and i would say that netherlands is definitely a good place to study i think you will also agree some with that it's a good place to study and yeah definitely most of the students yeah most of the students when they think of studying abroad they 
I think US is the top option for Indian students, and I would say that Netherlands really has good reputed universities. They have very good world ranking, and the education system is really good here. So, and it's a lot cheaper than US and UK. So, whether you have a scholarship or not, I would suggest that you definitely once consider Netherlands as an option. And about this, I don't know. how this is going to affect anyone uh, like any situation right now because everything is for now closed but as far as i know about radboud university i heard that the application is still going on and the procedures are still on so those students who i am in contact with one of the student who is admitted to uh, radboud university and she is from india so the university has informed her that she can keep her procedure going so whenever things get better in india she can apply for a visa and her further process and usually the courses start in september right so the university has allowed them to start somewhere in october because if there is a delay in visa or if the flights don't start so i know that the procedure is not completely discarded or your admissions are not cancelled so if you are applied or even if you are looking forward to apply i know things are going on so if you are determined or if you just know that you want to do it somewhere abroad then i procedure and you can see how but later if things get better then i think you know then you you can come and then you can start studying here so i would say follow the procedure for now and if you just feel that no you no longer want to take the risk and you don't want to now any more study abroad and just be where you are then just do that but yeah the procedure is still on universities are still on and everything is right now we are living on hope that it will get better tomorrow or one day so don't worry about it and do the applications if you want to study here okay yeah i i also agree on that and if there is any specific official announcements or something then i will obviously let you know via this uh, channel or the medium and thank you for your giving your time for such a nice discussion on the weekend and Problem. yeah so don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video and share this video among everyone so that they can know about how to apply Uh, in medical science or some fields related to it and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and see you in upcoming vlogs till then bye